Now let's, let's look at programming a binary clock using C. Here I'd like to have port D be the tenths of seconds, seconds, minutes, and hours. To start out, we'll go to MPLAB and again go through New Project. It's a standalone project. Eighteen series pick. Eighteen at forty six twenty. This one doesn't matter. High tech C compiler. And I'll stick this under my documents three seventy six. new directory called clock. And the project name will be clock. The source file over here. Let's have a new C main routine. I like to have the main routine have the same name as the file. Oops, uh, save some confusion. Again, it helps if you take an existing file and modify it and starting over. So here's a program called clock.c. Let's see Stick that in there and save it. Control S. Again, you have to make sure you offset your code. So again, that's run, set configuration, customize, linker, additional options, code offset, 800. Now this is an example of bottom-up programming. This would be the bare bones program. I need at the beginning, include pick 18.h, that tells you what port A, port B, port C are. This wait routine we'll look at in a sec. The main routine in C, you have to declare your variables before you use them. So here I'm going to have four variables, the tenths of seconds, seconds, minutes, and hours. I'll make everybody output, initialize these four, and then display it. This will actually have it running, but at least I can check to make sure the display is working. So to do that, I compile. It says success. That's how big my program was, 178 divided by 2 lines of assembly. Go to hyperterminal, and then transfer the hex file. And here I'm going to have to go look for it. It was under three, I, my documents, clock, clock.x, distribution, default, production, for all that. Find the hex file, and there it is. There's your code. You can see it's port A is four, three, two, one. My display routine's working. Okay, now let's have it count. To do that, I could say I'm just going to count every time I loop. Sec ten is going to increment by one. Compile. Done. Download. Transfer. Send text file. Conveniently, it remembers what directory I was in, so I just have to keep on finding the hex file again. This is counting the tenths of seconds really, really fast. It's so fast you can't see it. I need to throw in a wait loop. The pick executes 10 million instructions per second. To have it wait 100 milliseconds, I need to wait, basically burn 1 million clocks. One way to do that is to create a subroutine. Here's a wait routine. I'm just going to count to a thousand for no reason other than to waste a bunch of time. Do that data times. I want this to be set up so that when I pass the number five, I'll wait five milliseconds. Pass the number 100, I'll wait 100 milliseconds. This thousand is just a guess to get you started. Let's 
Wait, 100 milliseconds. I'm sure I spelled the name right. I didn't. Spell the weight of 100. That will now call the subroutine. Subroutines have to happen before you use them. You can see after declare variables before you use them. This has to be before your main routine. When I do that, I can now download my code. Now you can see that port D is counting. It should be one count every 100 milliseconds. The counts, the speed is a little bit off. If you use an oscilloscope, you can see what the timing is and adjust that number 1000 to make it so it's one count every second, or every 100 milliseconds. Uh, this is also kind of count up to 255. That's an 8-bit counter. If I wanted to count up to something smaller, like 10, I can modify this. Instead of counting every time, let's use a if statement. You can pretty much do everything with an if statement. If I've gotten to 10 seconds, then what I want to do is go back to zero increment seconds. Compile, download, I've noticed the tenths of seconds are counting every, counting up to nine, zero through nine. Every time it wraps around, port C, seconds increments. I'm not counting in binary for seconds. If I then modify this code, saying if seconds gets to 60, Seconds goes back to zero, and minutes increments. And that's going to take a while, so I actually change that. Let's have seconds count up to 10 as well. Just because I don't want to wait for 60 seconds. This is part of testing your code versus validation. In testing, I'm making sure that these different routines work. Testing, make sure that the timing is actually one count every 800 milliseconds. Validation is when you're done, do you get ten, uh, tenths of seconds, seconds, minutes, hours. So there's your code. What it should have is this is Okay, it wasn't working right. I had a mistake right here. I want to say if seconds is greater than or equal to 10. Putting that in there, seconds is not counting. There's 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And they'll have tenths of seconds, seconds, minutes, sort of. Continue that, and I can now get the hours in there and have a binary clock. A couple things to note. The programming style I'm using is called bottom-up programming, or also used called uh, baby steps. Rather than write your whole program at once and hope it works, write it in small steps. You know, first get it to display, then get it to count, then count slowly, then count in seconds, then count and get the minutes increment. By going step by step like that, you can get your program to work. If you're spending many, many hours in lab, you probably have a poor programming technique. Um, your assignment should only take about half an hour. If you do it in small steps like that, you should be able to get through your assignments without too much difficulty. The other nicety is it's very easy to download your code. That's part of the reason we're using the bootloader. You can just make a small change and test it. When you test your code, make sure that you have some output that you can see so you can tell whether your program works or not. With that, you should be able to get the binary clock to work.